Welcome back to Five More Minutes. Sorry for the delay. I have all sorts of terrible excuses I won't bore you with, but I am still committed to continuing Five More Minutes, though I may change it up when we finish the Bible with the Five More Minutes sections. We're talking today about Amos. Amos prophesied to the northern kingdom at a time that they were doing really well in the eyes of the world and really poorly in the eyes of the Lord. Their worship was uh, shallowly manipulative and obviously unsuccessful. They were oppressing the poor as they were getting richer as a nation, and God was telling them that this was not okay through the prophet Amos. A very odd and funny interlude in chapter 7 where the king says to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah and eat bread there and prophesy there because he was prophesying in Bethel. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor prophet's son. But I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs, but the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. So that's how we know what Amos did for a living. And it's a reminder that a lot of what we understand about the scriptures through study comes from paying attention to the text. We knew that Amos was a a farmer, basically, because he said that he was. He prophesied through the king, the kingdoms of uh, the northern kingdom, but kings Uzziah and Jeroboam, which means uh, he was probably a prophet for a long time. And the beginning of his prophecy um, would have just been exciting for the people of Israel in both good and bad ways. And I'll give you an example from chapter two, where he says, for three transgressions of Moab, not Israel, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because he burned to lime the bones of the king of Edom. So I will send a fire upon Moab and shall devour the strongholds of Kerioth, and Moab shall die amid uproar, amid shouting and the sound of trumpet. This is the last in a string of universal judgment statements in Amos that the people would have liked. But then, as is very uh, consistent of the Lord, he turns the justice in chapter 2 verse 4, on Judah, and then on the northern kingdom. For three transgressions of Judah, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment. For three transgressions of Israel, and for four, I will not revoke punishment. And there are all sorts of um, pieces to this. One is the apologetic that God will judge. And every human needs to understand that about him, and especially every human who has been harmed or oppressed, especially through sinful systems. They need to know this about the heart of God. But then a problem that a lot of, another a separate apologetic, but one that's indirectly referenced here is uh, a lot of people don't like uh, God's judgmental side. And yet he always judges his people more harshly. And Amos is a terrific example of that. Chapters one through two, three are about the nations. Chapter two, verse four through chapter nine, verse 10 are about how he will discipline Israel and Judah. Those were separate uh, kingdoms at the time. The people thought their wealth and stability was a sign of God's favor. This is so important. That is never why God allows certain people to be wealthy and others to be middle class and others to be impoverished. And what we do with our stuff displays our worship. With their wealth, the northern kingdom was oppressing the poor. They were worshiping God in some measure, um, but God esteemed their worship as shallow and manipulative. They were treating him the way Jesus talked in Matthew 6. If they ask enough times, that'll take care of it. And then the end of Amos is a beautiful eschatological promise uh, that after the kingdoms are destroyed and judged through the nations, they will be restored by God. In that day, I will raise up the booth of David that has fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord, who does this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountain shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people. We remember again and again and again, God never forgets his people. He allows them to go through trials of their own making and trials of the broken world, but he never forgets them and he promises that he will restore them, which is a very big part 
of the good news. 